Hello, um, I am making this video for a friend on my old Laguerre machine. I do have um, a Airlacher Gerhardt 64 stitch cylinder in here which is compatible with the Laguerre. You have to order that especially from Jamie. Uh, I can put a link to that in the, in the notes. But um, I'm doing a full sock from start to finish. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to do the Kitchener stitch on the toe yet, but we're going to cast on, we're going to go through the hung hem, we're going to do the leg, the heel, the foot, and the toe. Uh, all start to finish on the machine. So this is my first time trying to do a video uh, like this. I am not a professional, so cut me some slack in the comments, will you? Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pause this and get my cast on sock out and show you how to cast on. Okay, so I have my cast on sock. I'm going to pull it up through the inside and you can put it down through the top as well, but I just find it easier to go up and then I don't get any snags. So you take your little loops in your cast on sock and if you need to make a cast on sock there's plenty of videos on that one uh, this one's specifically just for the making the sock so you're gonna put you have all your needles in your cylinder all your latches are down double check um, and you're going to put your cast on sock every other needle all the way around The reason I like to do hung hem stitch socks is that it's quite easy to adjust your tension as you're going. It's harder when you're doing a ribbed sock um, because you'd have to do like a swatch, okay, just like you would do in knitting, a gauge swatch. Uh, with this, you have 28 or so stitches in your hem that really aren't going to be too visible. So if you need to adjust your tension at all, um, you can do that right at the beginning of the sock and nobody will see. So <clears throat> let me try and adjust this for you. You can see I've got every other stitch. We have the um, cast on sock. Sorry if this is bouncy. I'm trying to fix it. <clears throat> um, so every other needle has one of the loops on from the cast on sock. That's when you put in your uh, waste yarn. So we put in our waste yarn here. Okay, so you've got it in there. And this is the point where I like to put on my buckle and my weights on the bottom of the sock and you can't really see that here and I don't really want to mess with the camera because it'll get all bouncy nuts but <clears throat> so I put my buckle in my weight and you can see that it, now it, it was up here before and now that I put the buckle and the weight on it's really holding it down and that's what you want because if you don't have your weight on there you're gonna lose stitches skip stitches it's just a hot mess so always double check when you're doing your sock at any point when you're actually going to be cranking that all your weights are on there properly and we'll talk about the um, the heel weights later you don't need those at this point so <clears throat> crank a couple inches with your waist yarn I use a uh, real thin acrylic on a cone that I can get super cheap. It's old as dirt, but it seems to work. So get it started, go all the way around to where um, you couldn't get the loops on before and get those last few loops up on the machine. Go ahead and crank so that you can. I'm glad this happened. All right. So you can see, maybe not, maybe here, right here. I'm going to try and close in on that. Do you see how I've got two needles here and it's only gone around once? Sorry, this is not very good video quality. Um, it's only gone around once. You need to fix that. So 
you would go ahead and just, this is what I do, I take one off and just pick up any other one and stick it right on there. Okay, so now you can see that all the stitches are on the needles, you don't have any gaps. What's, what's happened um, down here, don't worry about that, this does not matter to anything. It's not going to hurt anything, being ugly, it is your scrap yarn, you do not have to worry about any of that. It's just when you're ready to put on your yarn that you're going to use for your sock, you need to make sure that every stitch is on the needle, your weights are pulling it tight so you don't want it up loose like this. You want to make sure it's pulled down tight onto the needles. And what I tend to do, if you can see right here, this is my uh, right side hash mark. Um, so half of my cylinder stitches are in front of this. Um, <clears throat> I have half my cylinder stitches on the front, that's where we're going to do the heel and the toe, and then half the cylinder stitches are on the back. I prefer to start at the right heel, or the right side hash mark. Some people prefer to start at the front, some at the back. I like to start at the right, and a lot of these things, you're just going to learn what you like to do as you uh, learn on your machine. So what you're going to do is crank to that right side hash mark. And I'm actually going to try and move the camera here so you can see a little better. So I'll be right back. Whew, that took a while. Okay, so I was trying to get a better angle so you could see down into the machine instead of kind of at the side of the machine. Um, like I said, I am a complete and total amateur. I am doing this with a webcam, a stick, and some tape. <laughs> So that's how I've got it all set up. But it's for a friend. It's not meant to be um, professional or anything like that. So I have the carrier, the yarn carrier here, uh, over to the right, right above the right side notch, uh, which you can't necessarily see so well anymore. Um, but you have it over there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my waist yarn take it out of the feeder at the top and I am going to uh, just pull it through keeping it in that last stitch um, and out of that first red stitch see how I have the yarn here in this last needle before uh, the red needle so that's how I like to have it I'm going to feed up my yarn through my mast and down into my yarn carrier. We're going to do green because I thought it would be easy to see. Um, so what you do is you get that yarn down into that first red stitch needle. Make sure the latch is open, but just get it down in there. And sometimes I'll even go back through the previous needle. And I'm sorry if this is hard to see. I'm not looking at the, the video. Okay, so um, if you can tell, I have the green yarn going through the last stitch of the previous row and the first stitch of the new row. And since this is going to be hidden, Oh, of course, now I messed it all up, the angle. Um, oh, yeah. oh, I'll fix it in a second. Since this is going to be hidden in uh, the hung hem, it doesn't need to be perfect, but you do need to make sure that you have all of the stitches have a piece of yarn, whether it's the waist yarn or your... Uh, sock yarn going through them because otherwise you'll drop stitches and that can lead to a mess later. Another tip is to use a yarn that really contrasts well with your sock yarn because you'll see when we pick up the hem you don't want them to be close in color at all. Okay. Okay. So now that you have it at the first stitch you're just going to crank. I do approximately 28 rows per hung hem. I find that to be a nice number. Also later on when you learn the picot hem, it makes it easy to remember to stop at 14, do the yarn overs, and then do the other 14 and do the hung hem. But um, So the hung hem, I just crank 28 rows. 
I always count here at the front of my cylinder. Um, some people count at the side. I always count at the front. I figure that extra um, three quarter row is negligible. So that's one. Now, uh, when you're doing these first, the first half of your hung hem rows, if the yarn, if the stitches are creeping up on the needles at all, that means your tension is too tight. You can tell when you look at your stitches here in the sock um, and here, if you feel like it could be a little tighter, go ahead and try and tighten it up at this point during the sock making um, because it's not going to affect the overall gauge of the sock at this point. Now, if you start changing gauge or tension uh, later on in the sock, you're going to have two socks at the very end that don't match because you've uh, messed with your tension during the making of the sock. Oh, my dog says hi. I don't know if you heard that. Um, but uh, get your tension where you want it during the making of the hung hem. And I always, once I figure out which tension that is, um, when the stitches aren't riding up the needles and I feel like they're, they're, um, the tension and the gauge of the fabric looks good, and this comes with experience, believe me, um, you, uh, once you figure out what that tension is, I always write it down uh, because for that second sock, you want to know exactly where you are. Okay, and sometimes with these older machines, especially with my Laguerre, I know my tension can creep up on me um, out of the blue, and um, that second sock is all of a sudden very small, and I don't know why, and, or the cranking, it gets hard to crank, or whatever it is. But anyway, um, if you just did what I did and lost count of how many stitches you had, all you need to do is count. So you have uh, one, two, three, four, five. So it looks like I need to do 23 more. Checking my tension. It seems to be a little tight. And that brings you to the end of the rows for your hung hem. What we're going to do at this point is we're going to end up going down here and picking all these loops up. The first loop we're going to put right on here and then we're going to go through, crank through and knit two together. So I'm going to try and get the camera a little bit lower so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so you have taken the weights off. All right, that's the first step in doing the hung hem. Take all the weights off. Uh, I like to use, ah, where is it? I lost all my stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, I like to use for this a dental pick because it's sharp and it's able to get the stitches and I don't split the yarn um, or anything like that. So what you're gonna do is you go down to the beginning of where you started cranking trying to get this for the camera so you can see um, and you're gonna pick up this very first row of stitches see how that's the first the very first green stitch so here's my waist yarn which is this brown color and my very first loop of green I need to pick that up now I like to start directly across from me so um, it's hard to tell where I am with this video, I'm sorry, but I'm sitting right here. So directly across from me, I like to pick up um, one of the loops there and start th that way. Uh, it, with experience, you'll, you'll kind of figure out which stitches are where and when. Uh, I'll just shut up and I'll show you. So you pick up one of those first loops and I kind of just guesstimate which needle it goes on based on it doesn't feel like it goes over here right it doesn't feel like it feels like it wants to go on this one so that's good enough for me I'm not a perfectionist um, so then all you have to do is you go around and you pick up the next loop and put it up on that next needle and the next and the next all the way around now you'll get faster at it 
Um, I'm still not a pro. I've only had my machine for about um, five months, but uh, I'm getting pretty good. So go all the way around and make sure you get one loop from that very first row you cranked up onto the active needle um, for every single stitch. If you don't, if you miss one, um, it is fixable at the end. You can just sew the stitch that you missed um, when you're weaving in your ends. You'll find a run and you can, you know, fix the ladder if there is one and then catch that stitch. But, you know, that's a pain in the butt. So try and make sure that you get one stitch for every needle all the way around. And the only tricky bit is going to come when you get to where the cylinder has the needles down and you can't get anything on to that. So you're getting that first row up here. And then here my needles are down so I can't put anything on there. So I go back to my 180 degrees and I start going the opposite way around getting all of these needles or all of these stitches up onto the active needles. I might fast forward this later, I'm not sure. Because this might be boring to watch, you know, step, stitch by stitch by stitch. All right, when you get to where your yarn was, it's just, you know, you pull pull on both your, your waist yarn and your working yarn and find that first stitch. This is usually, if I'm going to miss a stitch going on to the machine, that's usually where I'm going to do it because I missed that first stitch because it's either too I pulled too tight or it was too loose or some nonsense. But like I said, with practice, you'll learn to see which stitch it is. And if you do miss it, don't worry about it. You can fix it at the end. It's not a big deal, but you want to get to the point, you know, where you're, you're cranking workable socks without having to do a bunch of crap at the end, except for do the kitchener stitch on the toe and call it good. Believe me, I've been there. All right. So I've gotten almost all the way around, except these stitches, either the yarn carrier is in the way or the needles are down. So what I do is I just pull on the cast on sock with my hand, pull it down and crank a few stitches to get all my needles here um, where I haven't been able to pick these up yet. Get all these stitches up. Now here's where you're going to find out if you made a mistake because you're not going to have enough uh, first row loops to go up on needles where they're supposed to go. If you did it right, you'll have one loop for every needle, and you know you did it perfectly. And the first time I did this, well, more than the first time, the first month or so that I was doing this, this took me quite some time to do. Um, but like I said, when you get going, you get a little faster. And look, ooh, I have one loop left um, and one needle left, so I know I did all the stitches and all the loops. So that is your hung hum. You're done with that. Uh, now comes the cranking of the leg. But remember what I said about your weights. If you're ever going to crank, double check, make sure your weights are on. Because if you don't, well, you've probably already done it. You've seen what happens. And if you haven't, you don't want to. It's a hot mess. So put your weights back on and crank the amount that you like for your legs. Um, I'm probably going to like fast forward a little bit through this, but generally my pattern in my head is, you know, 28 row hung hem, 75 for the leg. Uh, and then I measure the gauge, which is another nice thing about doing a stockinette sock. Uh, you can measure as you go. So I'll show you that in a minute, but I'm going to crank out the leg and come back. That first row is going to be a little bit 
you know, tight. Uh, but basically what you're doing is you're knitting two together and, and locking that hem in place. So make sure you didn't drop any stitches, all your latches were down. Some of these things I just do by instinct now, but initially, you know, there were there were some mistakes. So make sure your latches are down. That first row, be kind of careful going around. Make sure you're catching both of those loops. Uh, like I said, mistakes do happen, but they're all fixable, just like regular knitting. Okay. I'm going to come back with the leg done. Okay, so you can tell I've still got my weights on. Um, I've got all, I did, I happened to do 60 rows for the leg this time, so those are all cranked down. Um, and you're ready for the heel. This is the trickiest part of the sock. Um, go ahead and put your sock, your, your, buckle and your weight put it up a little higher I like to at this point put it up to where the waist yarn started um, the heel weights are a little tricky but once you figure out where they're supposed to go so when I first started cranking I was like always dropping stitches on the heel I was you know losing stitches here stuff would like I don't know I was skipping stitches it it all boiled down to a, the tension. If the tension is too tight, your heel is going to be a nightmare. If your heel, and then two, if your heel weights aren't in the right spot, aren't pulling down. Um, but once I learned, you know, a little bit of a trick to that, so I lift up the back half of my stitches. Gonna have to move your cylinder a little bit to get them all up. So between my two hash marks for um, the socks, that's the needle that stays down. Okay, and then I have the yarn carrier at the front of the sock. All the back half needles of the sock are up, and so this is going to be um, the the top of the foot. Okay, that'll make sense. Uh, once you get your first sock all the way done and, and comes off, it'll make sense. But this is the top of your foot, and this is going to be the heel. We're going to make a heel pocket right now, a short row heel pocket. So um, we put the back half stitches up. We put our um, heel spring on the yarn at the very top. Let's see if I can show you that. There, I'm going to mess it all up, I can tell. So I've got my heel spring on. This is a very delicate operation built with tape and a stick. Uh, very professional. I messed it up. Let's see if I can fix it. Okay, I'm going to stop it and fix it and then come back. Okay. Um, so I just realized that my machine's kind of at a weird angle to, to understand. But so here's the back half, right? back half there and this is the front half that I'm that I'm working on right here um, so I hope that makes more sense so you've got your back needles up you've got your heel spring on and the last thing you're gonna need is your heel weights this is my setup All right I've got three weights sorry three weights hooked up with uh, carabiners to a heel I don't know what this thing's called, a V fork maybe? I don't know. But this is all I use. I do have, let me show you. I do have a whole bunch of these heel forks, but I never use them. I take that back. I do use them once in a while when I'm doing a fully ribbed sock because I really can't see under the ribber what I'm doing, so I kind of use this to supplement my weights. Um, and I tried to use this at the beginning, but I was always dropping stitches and missing stitches with these, so it's a personal preference what you like. But I found with the with the V weight hook thing, whatever this thing's called, uh, it only has two things. It's easy to move, it's easy to place, it's easy to see where you're supposed to be for me. So at first, you're going to put this down underneath the machine and I, it doesn't matter too much, but I try to put it down, um, yeah, 
I guess, what is that? Maybe 15, about to my second knuckle. Let's say that, about to my second knuckle. Um, so kind of hard to see, but my second knuckle and at the tip of my finger, you can see that little piece of metal. See it right there? All right. And you put that so that the two hooks of it match up with the, well, I mark mine white, the two marks of the end of your heel. And we'll see what that really means in a minute. So the most important thing, like I said, is the tension isn't too tight and that your heel hook is in the right place. So I put it about my second knuckle down and uh, the two hooks that are attaching to the sock and holding the weight down um, on that end of the sock are right about where I turn the heel. Okay? So the process and there are plenty of better videos than this to show you the process of the, of the heel I do the uh, one up and two down so at first we go around I'm gonna go my first row my first red stitch is gonna come up and that will wrap okay now make sure when you're coming around that the neat the yarn uh, for your sock is tight around that corner because if it's loose at all you're going to drop stitches and you don't want that. Um, so then you go ahead and crank that first row. And you may see on one side or the other that the stitches ride up on the needles. That means that your heel uh, weights are not in the right spot. So you can either move them up a row or two or down a row or two uh, and see if that makes a difference. So I went over to this side and pulled one up. There's no two down at the beginning. One up. Keep going back and forth. One up. One up on each side. Now at some point, we're going to have to move that heel weight, but it's not yet. And you'll know when because you'll start to see this fabric coming up like this. So right now it's kind of pointing down and you'll start seeing this, this fabric kind of moving up like this and you'll see that in a second or alternatively the stitches start riding up on your on your front needles and either of those things are bad news bears so I've got one up one up and that stitch there was riding up a little bit so I'm gonna keep a closer eye on it one up up. Um, and another trick that I've learned is to kind of hold on to these weights when I'm going around. Sometimes giving them a little extra pull will help. So now you can see that my fabric, instead of going straight down, is starting to build up at an angle. Now this is when you move your, your sock weights, your heel weights. So I take them off of where they were and it's hard to see. Let me see if I can get it. Eh, I'm gonna mess it up. Okay, it's hard to see the angle, uh, and I'll, maybe I'll try and splice something in here from my iPhone because it'll be easier. But you will see like a horizon, all right? And you want to find the edge of that horizon as you're looking at your machine this way, and attach the hooks to the edge of the horizon. Um, I'm gonna stop here and see if I can get a picture of that with my iPhone and splice it in. Okay, so you can see now um, the stitches are not going straight down. See how it doesn't form the, the perfect uh, circle anymore? We have this weird slope. It should be going straight down, but it's going kind of out. And if you can see... Hold on, sorry. I'm doing this one-handed. So if you can see, I try and put the weights right as I'm looking at the sock at the edge of that horizon of yarn the horizon of stitches and pull it straight down now it's going down from the needles uh, and I find that that is my little trick okay so I did record it and wow the video quality on my iPhone is so much better than this webcam but um, and maybe I'll just get some kind of holder for that in the future. Anyways, I'm not a professional, like I said. Uh, 
I've got my, I've moved my heel hooks up, so I'm going to finish the front of my heel, moving my heel hooks up the horizon, and that'll make sense as you look at the sock, and I hope I can splice that, that um, video in there, but we'll see. So, I'm still going back and forth, doing one stitch up, moving the needle as, as I need to. Now, I don't know if you can see this. Do you see this loop? You'll you'll know what I mean. You um, sometimes you miss a stitch because you didn't have your heel weights properly placed. So because I'm sitting there looking at the at the video instead of my actual machine, I uh, misplaced the heel weight. So I'm going to fix that with an extra cylinder needle easy peasy and I'm going to look at my heel weights again place them more properly at the edge of the horizon so it's pulling straight down here and I'm going to go back around and do my one ups one up My stitches um, are starting to creep up, so I'm going to move my heel weights up the horizon. Give it a good tug. Continue my one ups. Moved my heel weight up again, and I only have two more one-ups to do. Now the first to last is this, uh, can you see the white mark here? That means that's the end of the short rows for the heel. So that one goes up, and I have a matching one. Nah, you can't even see it. Uh, well, that's not going to work. Like I said, I'm a beginner. Uh, I have a matching white mark over here, so I'm going to go back over to that one. Pull that up, and at this point in your heel, you'll notice that the heel stitches are really, really riding up on the needles. And this is the last time you should have to move your heel weights if you put it in the proper location. So you're going to come up as close as you can get to the cylinder with your two hooks to your needle or your heel forks, whatever you're using, uh, as close to the white, or I have mine marked white, the... Uh, end of the short rows on your heel as close to those both as you can get them and it'll be really close to the cylinder and uh, what it's going to do is pull down the rest of the heels as this is the turning point this last row we just did is the turning point of the heel um, this is the very edge of the heel this is where you are going to uh, put that heel weight for the last time and you won't have to move it again until we do the toe hopefully so I'm at the last up, one up, and now I need to start going back the other way and wrapping those stitches. So how we wrap the stitches is we do one up and two down. So on the opposite, so I got one up here, two down here. So go back. And you'll notice if you've got your heel weight in the right place or not there, uh, your stitches shouldn't ride up. So one up, two down. one up and they are riding up a little bit I might have to move that two down one up two down one up two down one up two down one up two down, one up, two down. And I, I always, I have a habit of giving it a little tug, the heel weights, a little tug at the end of each row. That's just my personal habit. You don't have to do that. Two down. One up, two down. And you're going to do this 
all the way back to the red marks or the beginning of your heels. One up, two down. Um, always make sure your hinges are open. At any time you're putting a needle down, make sure those hinges are open or you will drop stitches. And dropping a stitch on a heel is a little trickier because you have short rows to figure out where stitches are supposed to go. We're almost there. You can see we're almost to that red mark on that side. That's the end of my heel. So this is my last row on this side because I just put my needle down into the red uh, marked stitch there. So back here. Notice I haven't had to move my heel weights at all. One up, two down. Uh, you can't tell over here. Oh, yeah, yeah, you can. You can see it. Uh, this is the red marked stitch on the other side of the cylinder. Uh, this is going to be my last row of my heel. So I did one up here, two down here, and I'm going to do one up. You can put two down here, it doesn't matter, just to keep it that way, but I don't. I just put one up here, and bring your yarn, wrap that last stitch, and bring your yarn carrier back to the front. Okay, so this is the front of the sock for me, and put all these needles down, all the way around. So I've got them all down. Uh, I go around and feel and look and make sure all my latches are down. This is the point where you will drop stitches when you start re-cranking the foot um, because your latches are up generally. Also, I always forget to do this. Uh, this is where you'll... Why is this cranking so tight? Take your heel spring off. <laughs> I leave mine on a lot and some people do that they leave it on so that they can have a tighter ankle if they have a very small heel sometimes they'll do that um, and for whatever other reasons I don't know yet because I'm like I said I'm still a beginner so now is where you crank the foot you can at this point remember we haven't measured gauge yet we've set our tension we know what fabric we like um, but we haven't measured the rows per inch yet and we're gonna have to do that soon but I always crank the first 25 rows of the foot first, and then I measure my gauge. So I'll do that. Okay, um, so you can see that we left the heel spring in, or the heel weights in. If we take them out, you can see that it's kind of like baggy. You don't want to do that. Just leave them in there. Um, and that'll keep uh, tension all the way around the cylinder. So I've done the first uh, 25 rows of the foot. Now I'm going to remove all the weights momentarily. This is just my method, and I'm sure someone's going to yell at me and say I'm doing it wrong, but uh, this is how I do it. At this point, I get a ruler. I have just a little one that I like, and then I also have um, a longer one that I use to, to measure the foot. But at this point, I measure, I go down to the, it's hard to see, but um, I I have enough of the sock out of the bottom of the machine where I can actually hold it up to the ruler and measure the rows per inch. Um, and that's what I would do at this point. I would measure the rows per inch. Now I have some really cool charts that I got from Etsy or from eBay that do all the math for you. How many rows you're going to need for the so uh, I'll put a link in the comments, but um, so it's got 
the inches, the foot length in inches, and then it calculates the number of rows for the foot that you're going to need to do. Um, there is math that you can do yourself. Some people do it. I'll show you how um, some people do it in a second. But um, yeah, there's other ways to do it. I like the chart because I don't really have to think. I just measure my gauge, look up my gauge on the chart with the inches that I want for the foot, and I crank that many rows, do the toe, ship, bing, bang, boom, I'm done. Okay? Um, and I'll put that in the, in the notes uh, for the video of that chart. Okay, so after you've measured your gauge um, and either looked up on your chart or done the math yourself, um, you put your weights back on. All your weights. You put the uh, main weight back on your buckle or whatever other system you've got going. Um, and your heel weights back at the corner of the heel doesn't have to be perfect, but as long as you have uh, equal tension all the way around, that's what you want. So I've done 25 rows of the foot, and this is where experience comes into play. So I always stop at 25 rows to check things out, to check tension, gauge, yada, yada, yada. Um, so I always know where I stopped. So I won't stop at 40. I won't stop. You know, if you do stop, write it down because you will forget, even though you tell yourself you won't. You will. So I always stop at 25, and then I don't have to worry about where I stopped. So we have uh, done 25 rows. I did the math. I figured out I need to do 45 rows at 9 rows per inch on the foot to get the right size. So I'm going to do 20 more rows. So this is my 45 rows. I'm going to remove the heel weights that I had, and I'm going to um, move them up. I want to show you something real quick, though. Some people will take their large ruler here, and this is how they measure for foot length. They'll stick it down in the sock to where the heel turns, and up here at where the sock has stopped or whatever, uh, they will measure. And somehow they figure out the through experience I'm sure they figure out that you know they need another inch and a half for the heel or half an inch or three quarters of an inch for the heel and the, the sock will be done I don't know how to do that I use my handy dandy charts uh, because math alright so put your heel weight up you're actually just making another heel for the toe you're doing the same thing you did for the heel uh, you're doing it for the toe so two knuckles in I hang my heel weight I put my back half of my cylinder up. Oh, I got one more there. They're sharp little buggers, so that's why I like to use these tools when I pull them up because I've stabbed myself a few times in the finger. It does not feel good. All right, so I have my front half down, my back half up. I have my heel weights on. I gotta put my heel spring on. Okay, so we have our tension spring up for that. And off we go to the races. Same thing. One up for the front half of the heel on each side. One up, one up, one up, one up, one up, one up. And on the end of the heel, or toe in this case, uh, one up, two down. So my stitches are all laying nice and low. This one was a little high, so I'm going to move this a little to that side. It looks like I had it off center. So these are just things you'll learn with experience. But that heel weight, once you get that heel weight where it's supposed to be, you'll save yourself a lot of headaches. One up. Stitches are starting to ride up. I take my 
see a weight off my horizon I can see where the horizon of the the fabric is so I go ahead and put my uh, hooks right there at the horizon and keep going keep going and so until your stitches start riding up again then you need to move your heel weight again You'll notice you're moving your heel weight three or four times during the beginning of the heel, uh, but once you turn the heel, you're not. Um, you are not moving it again because you got it right in the end, in the corner of the the pocket of that heel, uh, and that holds the fabric down at the correct tension. the last stitch on this side before I turn and bring it over here to the first so one up and this is the first of my two downs and at this point I move my uh, heel weights as close to the cylinder as I can get them and off I go to the races one up, two down. Sometimes it gets a little hard to crank if it's real tight. One up, two down. One up, two down. Shout out to Minibear. What this is for. down we're almost there one up two down one up last row to this side of the heel one up two down last row to this side of the heel you can see the red there if you look really carefully one up all right, this is the last row of the of the toe or the heel. It could be either, but in this case, it's the toe. So um, you're going to wrap that last stitch and stop at the front and put all your needles down. Make sure all the latches are down. Take your yarn carrier to the beginning of the heel, that first stitch. Tap just until that latch closes on that first stitch and you are done with your sock. Um, what you do then is you cut off, I usually um, go from the yarn carrier, it goes up through the, through the yarn mast and down into the ball. I cut at the level of the ball, that means I have plenty of yarn. So to do your Kitchener stitch. Now at this point you're just going to pull the yarn through the mast and the carrier into the middle of your sock. Sometimes you make a tangled hot mess, but then you clean it up. Um, and you have that latch up on that first stitch, so that's where the yarn is going to be stuck, right there where you want it. Take your waist yarn, bring it through, 
make sure you go back to that sometimes I'll stick it right in there where the latch was shut on the other because sometimes the latch will open just enough where you can get that waste yarn in there so you have like a double security measure at that point but you don't really need that you can just put it in the first one that that's not that doesn't have any yarn in it and you'll see what I mean when you get to this point point. Um, and then you crank around and hope that all your latches are open and you don't drop any stitches because that would be a pain in the butt sometimes that first one doesn't want to go all right, and around you go. Now, you can cut here uh, and remove the sock from the machine and do the kitchener stitch on the toe, or you can give yourself a couple extra inches of waist yarn and cast on your second sock for the pair. Now, if you're just beginning, I like to take them off still even, and I still consider myself a beginner, but I like to take that first sock off if I'm at all worried about the sizing because you'd rather uh, redo one sock than redo a pair of socks if your gauge or your tension wasn't quite what you thought it was or you did the math wrong or you measured with your stick wrong or your stick, your ruler. Um, so there you go sock done. I'm going to go ahead and leave this one on there because I'm going to do a second, but please leave any questions or comments. I know you're going to rag on me for the low video quality, but it is what it is, and I did what I could. So enjoy cranking on your old World War One, World War Two, and there's newer machines out there too, and get busy making socks. Bye!